you have heard about us plentifully yesterday and uh, it uh, serves as a scalable resource for FAIR biological imaging data. Maybe you heard about FAIR, it's an abbreviation, um, maybe not. I will actually explain to you later what it is. And we are based at the University of Dundee. The picture of the Tay River and Dundee is in the background. Um, okay, right. Um, now, IDR is uh, navigated through coming to the link idr.openmicroscopy.org, which we will do in a second. And that's how it looks like. That's what you will be confronted with. Uh, so what is it actually IDR? IDR is a um, resource which serves as a resource for the wider scientific community. It's open and free, and it's purporting to be something like a gene bank, but in the imaging world. So uh, the scientists are submitting data into IDR, which are linked to publications in scientific journals. And uh, the submission is then handled by the OME team, but the data are by other people. And uh, the uh, submission okay uh, when uh, successful then ends with the new release item uh, new released item on the um, image data resource and uh, uh, yeah the community then has the opportunity to uh, search browse reuse and analyze the image data stored in this way now, uh, when you come to the IDR, there will be a drop down menu. That's fine. Let's now go over the higher level, um, higher level justifications for the IDR's existence. So, as I said, I will explain what FAIR is. So, the findable means that the original image data are cross link from publication by DOI. There is simply a link in the scientific publication, let's say in the Nature paper uh, in uh, methods, uh, there will be data provenance or something like that link. And if you click on that, it will go directly to IDR to the, uh, to the proper uh, study, we call it. So one submission bit is called in IDR a study and uh, will navigate you there. Accessible, uh, we will see the accessibility today during the workshop. We will retrieve some metadata uh, via API and I hope that you remember what API is. Once more, a reminder, the workshop from yesterday is completely relevant because IDR technically is nothing else but Omero. Um, it's interoperable, so it co uses common defined vocabulary, so-called ontologies, and we will have some examples uh, of that as well, uh, like the phenotype ontologies uh, will be, will be um, honed in the in the upcoming workshop now and it's uh, reusable uh, which means that you can take the data and use them for other purposes as we freely do as you saw yesterday in the workshop we use the idea data uh, for training you on Omero but of course this should not be the only uh, way how you can reuse the data I already highlighted how the idea is meant to be used um, so uh, what does it mean to be accepted as a study in IDR? Well, first you have a paper or you have a manuscript in submission process, and then you submit the raw image data to the OME team via the IDR website. And uh, it, there is written how to do that. And then there is a process which will uh, determine whether or not this is a reference data set which you are submitting. The point I'm making here is not everything will be admitted into IDR. The main uh, criteria is that the data are well annotated. Um, so basically all the annotation uh, which are possible to, to be done, which are sensible and which help the uh, scientists later to find the images according to criteria such as linkage to biomolecular resources, going via compounds used or cell lines uh, to other databases and uh, uh, gene banks. 
um, etc uh, is is a must and this is the main criteria the uh, other criteria of course is the is that the data set yields itself to be of use for uh, further per use uh, when uh, then uh, stored in the image data resource in the IDR. Um, okay, so that's how you go to the submissions page, uh, read it well if you intend, and of course you're very welcome to, to submit the data to the IDR. Um, the IDR grows and grows. These numbers are, of course, almost certainly outdated. It's not October, and the IDR goes strong uh, into uh, went strong into November, December, and January. Uh, so 190 terabytes of data. But interestingly, you can see yes, the image file is very nice. But uh, you, we can count also genes, antibodies, and compounds because these are the bits of the metadata um, on the on the images. And thus, uh, we have also other um, more uh, less technical measures, more biological measures, uh, how to how to uh, judge the strength of the IDR. Uh, the IDR um, studies are from a, a wide range of scientific journals. Indeed, the Nature Group uh, are recommending, and actually others already as well, are recommending IDR as the place to store your data uh, linked to your publication in our in our journal, says the editor. So. Um, as highlighted uh, already, the, this is the DOI cross-referencing. Uh, this is a snippet of the paper, and uh, you can go from the paper to the IDR to the proper study and vice versa. Um, the IDR is hosted at the EMBL um, EBI Embassy. This is the European Bioinformatics Institute down, he uh, down here in, in England. Uh, where we are in Scotland, of course, be careful, but uh, uh, it's uh, it's an institution which is so generous to us that uh, they host the data uh, for us um, uh, on their resources, uh, the so-called Embassy Cloud. And uh, if you go there, you will see that, but you will go there uh, and see that. So I will not lose the time with uh, with this slide too much. Maybe just mind you, the download for analysis is something which will pop up later and even tomorrow. Okay, so bear that in mind. Um, the uh, IDR is uh, very interesting because of the linked metadata. I already mentioned it a couple of times. So how does it look like? Uh, we will have uh, in the attributes tab, and you might remember from yesterday, the attributes are actually nothing else than the key value pairs I was bothering you with yesterday. Um, some uh, um, metadata, they are clickable links in many cases. That's why they are blue. So uh, feel free to click on them and see what it does. And uh, an image such as this uh, one on IDR 0012 has simply this example of the, uh, of the metadata linked to that uh, in Omero via the relational database as mentioned yesterday. And for example, you can have a phenotype elongated cell and on that image also there is a metadata gene symbol. So you know now that the gene is uh, linked to the phenotype or rather vice versa phenotype to the gene, then you can click on the gene and uh, you have also the ontology, the controlled vocabularies uh, linked to the phenotype. Um, so the elongated cells is not, not something we just came out of the blue uh, with. Uh, instead, we are really using uh, something more solid uh, and established. The uh, link uh, can be also clicked and the lists can be can be viewed. This is all achieved via uh, Omero handling uh, the, the key, uh, key value pairs here in a clever way. Uh, we can go into that. I mentioned the ontologies, so these are the controlled vocabularies and there are quite a few uh, uh, libraries of ontologies uh, for example, for organisms, we use NCBI taxon uh, library and uh, let's say for phenotype, the CAMPO, 
which you might uh, which you might know. This is quite famous one. Um, further, there is a linkage to human protein atlas, which will give you if you are let's say after genes, which will give you the idea about uh, the protein, uh, possibly as which comes as a product of the gene. Um, the human protein atlas is is a, a big project, and uh, yeah, we can think about that about about that as yet another uh, data bank, which uh, which is cross-linking and sensible information uh, to the uh, to the images in the IDR. Again, you can go both ways, and we will actually go that go through that uh, in the exercise. So, uh, without further ado, this uh, going on the next slide, which highlights that IDR has close cross linkage even with Empire. So, this is the electron microscopy database you will uh, hear about in the talk in the afternoon. And uh, possibly you have heard about the COVID epidemics. So this is the uh, this is the data which are crossing and double published with both uh, Empire and IDR. And if you wish, so you can navigate there and uh, inspect it uh, in the real thing. Okay. Now we will put uh, some emphasis on the analysis as well. I just said that the IDR is um, its purpose is also to enable a further analysis and reanalysis of the results stored there. The submissions into the IDR might or might not have uh, some analytical results already attached to the images, and we also enable the analysis using the uh, Jupyter notebooks, which were shortly mentioned yesterday in the Omero workshop. Using the Omero API, um, you can spin up an environment, which we will do today, um, in uh, either on the cloud in the MyBinder service or um, locally and inside a web-based uh, Jupyter Notebook. If you don't know what Jupyter Notebook is, it's, a, it's an easy to handle environment for even people who are scared by coding, uh, which consists of cells, uh, which um, uh, consist of uh, snippets of code, which you can manipulate and execute the code by simple click in the browser. And you can query the IDR, let's say, for phenotypes, and we will do that. We will do that um, uh, plentifully just in a minute. Uh, so the um, notebooks are hosted in this GitHub repository. If you click on that link, uh, I will just uh, re-emphasize in a minute how you find this presentation, uh, which I forgot. Forgive me for that. If you click on that link or simply remember that, uh, github.com IDR, uh, IDR notebooks. I'll put the then, link in the chat earlier on, Peter. Don't worry. Th thank you very much. Um, the um, uh, view you will get there is there will be something very github -y, which you will gladly scroll through. Uh, lower in the page, you will find a badge. It will be smaller than I have it here in my slide, but the environment looks like that. The red arrow is not there. It's just uh, for me to show you uh, what to click on. And if you simply click on this very badge um, in that uh, IDR Notebooks repository in GitHub, uh, you have to not move a finger more. And by some magic, the uh, new tab opens in your browser. And after a while, uh, this view will be presented to you in the new tab, which is basically a list of notebooks you are free to execute. And this is all done by uh, MyBinder building a Docker image. Uh, so MyBinder is a free service where you pass some, some bits of complex code, which you don't have to worry about because Jean-Marie prepared them very nicely already. And if you pass those bits of code, and uh, put them to my binder my binder will build it so to say so it will it will make them kind of uh, ready to use okay and that's how you do it it's very easy if you want to use then other examples of um, 
uh, notebooks which connect to the IDR. Uh, I was yesterday telling you about the Omero guides. If you go to the following links in the presentation, you will almost always find a kind of clean Omero notebook side shoulder to shoulder with the same workflow which is done on IDR. And now the most uh, typical difference is that if you think about Omero, as we were going through it yesterday, uh, I was showing you several examples where you are saving the metadata or saving the results such as regions of interest or segmentations or saving the recipes for the analysis back to Omero to the proper image. Now, if you think about it for just, just a, a short while, you will realize why this workflow does not fully work in IDR. And this is because IDR by its own nature cannot allow you to write back into IDR whatever you like, because IDR can be navigated by anyone and everyone in the whole world. And uh, thus it's a read only server. Okay, it's a read only Omero server, and that's a big difference. But nevertheless, you can still run the analysis and store it uh, for yourself somewhere else, which we will do. And now, uh, a short uh, sequel to the download which I mentioned. Um, the file download. Um, in the IDR, if you wish to download a lot of files locally and reanalyze them, we would navigate you to a service called Aspera. It's all uh, described under this URL. Okay, uh, you might think, yeah, we could do that directly from Omero using the download button in the Omero web. Uh, the answer is um, uh, is kind of yeah partially be 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 very modest about this idea. So um, and why, where, and how to get forward with this particular point will be very much uh, gone through tomorrow in the workshop, uh, which is the sharing big image data in the cloud. Okay, so Josh Moore, to, uh, which will be one of the tutors of the workshop, is on the call today. Uh, so this is a teaser, and this is the image I was bothering you with yesterday, which he will use plentifully. It's an image which is stored in IDR. I was showing it to you yesterday on our training server, but uh, it just came to the training server simply from IDR. And uh, uh, the uh, workflows will be shown how to achieve um, image data in the cloud using uh, yeah, some new image formats. So enough of the workshop tomorrow. And uh, just to summarize my talk here, the IDR is publicly available. It has curated studies. This means a lot of effort is put into the uh, quality of the metadata and so-called rich representation of the image data. Um, and uh, yeah, it is searchable, it's scalable. You can see the progress of the, of the data which are stored in IDR is almost exponential with regards to the, uh, to the sizes of the data that links metadata and enables reanalysis that can be deployed by others, okay? This is some important idea which I will just touch upon. IDR has to be thought uh, in about in two ways. What I will be showing you today is a, one concrete implementation of IDR. This, is, this means uh, kind of one, we take it with a pinch of salt. It's, it's several servers here, but it's one kind of uh, unit of IDR. And this is like the first, the mother idea, or whatever you want, might call it. But you can think about IDR as about an idea. And nothing is stopping you to uh, spin up your own IDR in your own institution or cluster of institutions, whatever you choose, because we provide you with recipes about how to do that. Good. Now, again, uh, the IDR is uh, free to use, but not developed for free. So again, we have to thank uh, our uh, sponsors. 
and yes it's again a grant funded organization um, so thank you very much and last but not least thanks to the idr team this is the curator of the idr francis wong and sebastian besson is, is leading the idr effort uh very good now let me see where are we I will now fix what I forgot to tell you last uh, during the talk. This is, uh, hopefully you remember that that folder. Now, this, this is again starting to be serious, okay? So if you don't know where I am now, I'm under downloads.openmicroscopy.org in the presentations and uh, and in the year 2021 now as opposed to yesterday now there are five items because uh because there is a new item for the tomorrow's presentation which is called ngff leave for tomorrow but uh, for today we will concentrate on the gbi idr presentation that's the one which i was just showing to you now okay so this is the line uh, number three, if I don't count the parent directory, and on the GBI IDR 2021 walkthrough. Okay, so if I open that link in a new tab, I will have something like this GBI 2021 IDR workshop. It's this. If you don't have this, okay, then be sure to actively ask uh, Jean Marie and Josh to help you to find it. You do want to find that, okay. That's the lifeline, okay? And uh, there is, again, a reiteration where the presentation is. And we will go in the workshop, which uh, starts just now after the presentation uh, and uh, go and into the user interface of the IDR, which is nothing than Omero Web with some uh, with some front page and the front page is actually also Omero uh, plugin for Omero web called Omero gallery. The first step which we do is uh, we will uh, search for some uh, phenotypes and genes as highlighted in the talk. So let's go to the IDR. It's opened in my browser in a new tab and I have here, first of all, uh, let, let's quickly touch on the, on the things I mentioned. So for example, data download would be this item here. In the uh, submissions, how to submit data, you can see uh, it's, it's right here. Um, so you can feel free to explore uh, these submenus. But we assume that if you come to the IDR, uh, mainly you would like to explore the data and uh, let's say find um, uh, and reanalyze. Now, the first step we have in the walkthrough is we go to the menu uh, in the search by and we will select the phenotype. You can see by how many attributes you can search the images in the IDR for. Um, we let's go for let's go for phenotype, and then I will start typing uh, elong for elongated cells, and if I give it a second, automatically a drop-down menu drops down, and I can select elongated cells. Okay, this is a published phenotype class in the Campo uh, ontology, uh, which is. Uh, which is used in IDR on many images. Many images are annotated with this phenotype elongated cells. And now I'm basically finding uh, uh, the, this set. So 182 images are uh, associated with the elongated cells phenotype. I want to know more because I'm interested in this phenotype. I want to see the genes which are linked to that phenotype. Now, uh, when I clicked on the more 
link, I am suddenly uh, transferred into the environment which you know from yesterday. This is obviously an Omero web client, um, except it has some new tabs here. Uh, these are these are uh, tabs which we will use in a second, and you will understand their uh, their purpose. You can use them, by the way, in the vanilla Omero as well, if you wish so. Um, and I will select the HT07 plate. So this is something we didn't go through yesterday too much. Uh, this is a screen plate well format uh, for high throughput screening. Uh, and I will click on the H207 and in the walkthrough is a typo. I'm really sorry about that. It just says that uh, I will find uh, five images, but this is just because uh, I was kind of uh, rushing it or what, and I didn't see the obvious six images which, which, uh, which are there. And I will select the first image in the HT07 and I can see that there are genes. By the way, you can you can uh, you don't have to slavishly um, uh, follow the walkthrough. Of course, you can find uh, you can click on any other on any other image and uh, find some other gene. Uh, feel free to do that. But uh, I have written the walkthrough such in such way, of course, that I I will still have the line and show the points which I want to show. Um, so. There is the gene identifier and the gene symbol. First of all, in the gene identifier, you can open in the new tab a link which goes to the um, ensemble. Uh, oh no, it's an NCBI database. Okay, so uh, yes, you can see the linkage to the other databases. In this case, a gene bank. And uh, I was just clicking on this on the symbol. Yeah. And if you click on gene symbol, though, this is what is uh, written in the walkthrough. If you click on gene symbol, you see that you again uh, jumped in here. By the way, uh, this, uh, this uh, menu, this search menu where we just found the gene IRF1, um, contains images. This obviously you can recognize now a project and a data set from yesterday. These are plates and screens. It's just images in, in a little bit a different order and uh, arrangement. Um, these containers contain many more images than highlighted here. Uh, some of them will uh, contain, will be linked to the gene IRF, IRF1, some of them will not, but this very search, uh, which I'm showing to you here, will pick from that container called HPA, na, 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 which we call data set, will pick only those images, only and so those images which have the IRF1 uh, gene associated with them and leave the other in peace. So uh, you have this, uh, the, the search is actually quite kind of clever if you want. I'm uh, selecting a first image here in the, this is by the way, the human protein atlas. You can see it here. If you expand it, it's IDR 043, Ulan human protein atlas experiment A. Yeah, And in the first image, if I click on that, um, I can again ask, uh, um, I can again inspect the attributes. These are again just the key value pairs. If you wonder why it was yesterday written here, key value pairs, this is because you can adjust the Omero web client in such a way that it can write into, it can display uh, uh, arbitrary names in those harmonicas as you wish. Okay, so that's what we did in the IDR. And uh, then uh, you can go and see that there is an antibody attribute which uh, says antibody identifier. If you, uh, so this is basically the antibody with which the, uh, the sample was stained. And this antibody is of course against the protein. So this will tell you something already about the protein, which, uh, which is associated with the gene we are looking at, the IRIRF1. And if we click on this small sign next to the per antibody identifier, a new tab will open and we are uh, transferred into the human protein atlas database 
uh, which deals with uh, with proteins uh, basically okay and you can see all you, all you wish uh, the further information about uh, proteins associated with IRF1 okay in this another environment so this is the cross-linking with other databases and uh, searchability which we just went through and nevertheless um, if I go back to where we were I just go back with my brow back browser button you see that's where we were that's where we started the elongated cells uh, we can we can have another question we can go and say uh, yeah if you go to genes um, and search for a gene as it's written in the walkthrough cdk um, two i think uh, cdk5 yeah go CDK5 RAP2, it's uh, again our auto completion. Okay. Auto completion. And I will drop down the menu. Now it found again all the images which are associated with this gene. That's fine. But my question is do all of them have some phenotype information uh, associated? And the answer is unfortunately no this search will not find that for me uh, some of those images might have the phenotype associated if i go to this one uh, maybe i'm lucky okay and there is some phenotype but already you can see actually no not with this one so how about if i want to ask a question uh, whether or not the phenotype is associated and uh, on the on the find found images well, actually, I can't because I, I would have to um, I would have to put two questions into this search box, and this is not what it's built for. And that's that leads us nicely to the to the uh, Jupyter notebooks and the API. Okay, so let's uh, let's see how much we manage to do in the remaining time. As we said, the, the call will have to end in something like uh, fifty. 40, 50 minutes. So uh, let's let's leave the IDR user interface uh, as it is. We went through all these steps and we are now here, metadata retrieval and analysis using API, okay? So I will click on the link here in the walkthrough I always use the click open in a new tab because uh, that's I like that I'm not losing information here. I'm in the GitHub repository called IDR-Notebooks. Maybe you are scared by all this. Be scared, don't worry. Uh, the thing I want you to do is as uh, highlighted in the presentation and in the walkthrough is to start scrolling down. Now this is a less scary part called README. And under the IDR notebooks, there is a, a badge, which is saying there is some funny icon here and it says launch binder. Okay, do you got that? I hope you do. Now, if you click on that badge, please do that now. Um, following thing will happen. I will be renavigated to the mybinder.org, which is the uh, a free service, which will start building for me an image of that um, of the code which was uh, which was contained in the IDR notebook repository. Okay, and it will go on for some time. This is just a preview. When this uh, this process is finished, then the preview will go in such a way that these items will start to be clickable and highlighted as blue, but we will have to give it some time and because you are probably clicking on the same time uh, to, to this link, then yeah, uh, let's see. It's a free service, but of course you, you, you might need even a couple of clicks and in a couple of minutes you might be done. That's why I am done already. Oh, it's done already here actually for me. This was fast. I'm quite, quite happy with that. So let me continue here in this environment, just as you do. 
Um, yeah, again, if you are lost, so the chat, that's why the chat is there. Jean-Marie and Josh will, will catch you up and help, help you. And I would like us to start a, a notebook, which is called Genes to Phenotypes. Okay, so mind you, the Jupyter environment like that, a couple of folders, one, two, three, the fourth notebook from the top. Yeah, just under gene network and above getting started. Genes to phenotypes. Clicking on that notebook, I will get into an environment. This is the typical Ju Jupyter environment, which is now run somewhere on the cloud on the free service called MyBinder. And the, the content of this environment are some, uh, uh, some Python scripts in this case. Uh, which were written by Jean-Marie and uh, which will uh, help us to understand how to connect uh, to IDR using the application programming interface and run any query almost uh, which we like uh, on, on the IDR data, okay? So as it says, the, the notebook gets the phenotypes unassociated with the list of genes from high content screens. This time we have the luxury to run uh, queries like, I want to search for two. Uh, I'm just starting the notebook because this might take time. I will start simply by the clicking on the first cell. I select it and click on run, okay? Now the important point if you never worked with Jupiter is to mind this small number where, I'm, where my mouse is hovering. It says in uh, square bracket one. When I click run, the square bracket one will uh, change into square bracket star. And I have to wait with the execution of the next cell until the star goes and again a number will, will appear, okay? Don't expect necessarily an output at the bottom of the cell. Some cells will have, some cells will not. So I'm clicking through like that. So just to, um, just to reiterate, in this notebook, we can, for example, search for a list of genes, okay? So in the user interface, you saw I was basically always bound to select my one concrete gene, and this would found, find all the images associated with that, and then another gene, but not both, okay? So uh, if, I, if I go through this notebook, you will see that when I set up the query and session, these are some technical necessities to um, to prepare my my uh, my working environment. This is the important cell where the genes are defined. If you choose to change the genes line here by simply clicking into that and writing into into the uh, into the box something else, such as uh, I don't know. I uh, R R F one. That's the one which we were uh, which we were doing. Well, of course, don't do that. You can of course go by by Control Z and then run the cell. Then uh, the notebook will dutifully change the list. Uh, okay, I will change it back to to what what was there before. Okay, like so and go with uh, with the with there uh, but you uh, you hopefully understand the point yeah that's the point where you can simply expand the list or put more genes in or whatever you choose so the notebook of course works on on any genes or gene lists which you which you choose to put into that okay so this is the list i'm going for and um now we just have to do some convenience um, because the URLs are used uh, lower so, so that the code is nicer. That's all what is the cell about. And then find images for each gene specified, okay? Uh, this, will, this will again uh, just prepare some ground for each gene search of images uh, either in plates or data sets, then search for phenotypes associated with the images. And the results will be saved in the CSV file. We will see that as well. So this is also the strength of this environment. You can uh, be, sorry for the typo, this should be of course CSV here. Uh, first of all, some couple of helper methods. So the helper methods will go always through very quickly because they are just definitions in Python. They don't really do anything. 
uh, so the star is gone already and then there is the retrieve data okay i have to first uh, execute the cell under the retrieve data then only i can i can harvest the csv file as highlighted here under this cell so let's click on that this will take some time because this cell is really doing something after all the preparations and definitions this cell indeed is going into idr and searching through the images in the screen swells plates and images and projects and finds the list uh, of of the data uh, of the of the images associated with the two genes which i which i put in previously let's remind ourselves which one are those this is the cdk uh, 5 rap 2 and uh, c sent set and 2 okay so this is gonna take some time ta -da -da, ta -da -da, ta -da -da. and i will allow myself a small trick to not to lose your time i will just go somewhere where i have the notebook built already okay and after that a small list will appear okay so we said retrieve data that's the cell sorry i will just I will just go here and it says to download it, meaning a CSV file, which was created by executing of this cell, click file, open, select the CSV and open it. Okay, so I go here on the top left, go file, open. This will open a new tab and there is a list of files. The notebooks themselves are files as well. So you kind of have the feeling that you landed where you were before, which is fine. Don't panic. You just scroll to the very bottom and the new files are listed here at the very bottom. Okay. And the files you are after are the files uh, ending with CSV. You will have just one because you didn't eagerly run the notebook several times. Of course, every time when you click on that cell, a new CSV will be produced. But that's of course an advantage because if you uh, if you change the search criteria and put a new list of genes uh, where I was showing to you in the cell above, then you re uh, rerun the cell which creates the CSV. You will have a new CSV with a new search with a new list of images associated with a different list of genes i click on that csv file and I, again uh, this shows me the csv file as it is in the jupyter environment but this is a little bit too remote for me i want it locally now so i go file download and i will directly open it with microsoft excel of course i would i could of course save the file as well and microsoft excel dutifully opens in my local environment and that's the that's the uh, list uh, of of genes uh, first of all, which I which was my input information. Then it says in which uh, screen and plate it was. It's either inside screen and plate that image, or it is inside projected data set. You can see that it's either or. Okay. Then I have in the image column the uh, ID of the image. Okay, okay. Again, there is no problem uh, in having yet another column which would say the name of the image. That's fine. And I have the, if I wish so, I could uh, easily change the notebook. Oh, Jean Marie could do it. Um, and then I have the phenotype. That's why I was looking for all that. You can see that I have, uh, that I have uh, at the first look, three phenotypes. One is called polylobed automatic one is called dynamic changes automatic and uh, then protein localized to centrosome these are three phenotypes which are associated with the two genes one of them being cdk5 rap2 and the other being set n2 okay so that's that's what I found, and I have it locally here for my per use. I can do anything I like with that file in Excel and ask more and more questions, or do cross searches, etc., or evaluation post hoc. Um, okay, so uh, how am I doing here? Yes, indeed, here in my binder where I was going through that, uh, the the file is is uh, created as well. So once more, file open on and here i have just one this is the freshly created csv 
da 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 I open that file file download you know the story already so I will go back to the notebook in my binder and continue running the cells so uh, as well as the output in the CSV I have on the output also in uh, in some variable in those in this uh, in this docker okay so in the code remembers kind of the CSV itself so I can now go and print it uh, in here into the notebook this is basically the thing which you just saw in my excel yeah so you don't have to go the excel way and download the file uh, you you always have many many options with those notebooks filter by a specified phenotype okay the um, filtering here is done by the campo uh, but because the uh, csv is actually so rich you can find the campo here as well uh, you don't have to worry about that so i can change the campus uh, number like so i can copy it and then and then paste it into the cell uh, like so and then i can run the cell and it will give me some list okay but if i want to come back to where, what what it was there before okay i run it very good, it finds three images. And this is because I was looking for the Campo term, uh, Campo underscore 40357. Okay, you can see that the 357 is the polyloped automatic uh, phenotype or phenotype term name more human readable is uh, polylobed nuclear phenotype is probably more appropriate to speak about with humans. And uh, I have three images here, very good. Now, this cell is just demonstrating how a follow-up analysis on the images retrieved by that because this is the metadata part of the notebook done now. I hope that you understand what happened here, yeah? Uh, I have the images in the hand. These are the interesting ones which are associated with my list of genes and they do have a phenotype and this phenotype I narrowed up on by uh, searching in the list of phenotypes which were associated with this gene and then uh, now I, I zoomed in on those three images and these are the one I want to work with. So either I work with all three of them or whatever, this will actually come later in the optional exercise, but let's now be uh, modest and just grab the first one which the script is doing for me and do some analysis on it. So I select the um, image and uh, it says select the first image. This means this one, okay, from the list. I executed the cell, it just spits out the, um, the number of the image. Now I have to connect to IDR, okay, because I will be seriously retrieving the image data from the IDR. I click on run, I load the image. Okay, uh, it just loads the information about the image, it loads the image um, object from, uh, from Omero. So that was quite quick. But now I'm loading the first plane, so that's nice. And the first plane is here and it uh, does uh, some uh, filtering on it, okay? And uh, you can see the image is displayed here. Now I would like to do some segmentation, okay? So in Python directly, because this is a Python script, I can simply go and run threshold. And then you can see the thresholding with the Otsu algorithm, maybe you happen to know. Um, it's quite a common um, segmentation algorithm. Uh, you get a fairly decent result. Uh, okay, so this is already uh, segmented. And you can save the predicted image, uh, basically this result on uh, into the notebook environment, save the predicted image uh, as the name of the uh, image as the name of the TIFF file. And to download it, click file open. I think you kind of remember that trick, no? So you go file, um, open, and then you go down and you can see that here is a TIFF image. So I can simply open it like that. Don't worry about this error, okay? Don't worry about this. It. It's just uh, at an, a futile attempt of this text editor to open an image, which will of course fail. Uh, you just click on file, download, and save the file. And 
voila, I have the image here locally. That's the segmented image. That's on my Mac now here. So, so easy and quick, okay? So let's go back to our notebook and I will close the connection. Maybe I will, maybe not, because in the exercise I will, I will uh, need it. Nevertheless, the exercise should uh, be so understandable that um, that you can reconnect again. We have tried to write it like so. Uh, ask questions if there are any towards this notebook. This is basically the uh, showing the main features of how to connect uh, to IDR and retrieve an image after you found it uh, using a complex search using the metadata and uh, segment it and uh, grab the output of the segmentation locally. Now this exercise is basically asking us to do that in, uh, in looped manner to basically loop over several images, in this case over all the images which are in, in uh, this table over here. Yeah, so these are my narrowed down searches, the three images. And if I simply execute the exercise, you don't have to do that, yeah. But uh, just for you to be not to be lost, I will add a new cell under that exercise. I will have to reconnect to IDR, okay? That's why the cell uh, is prepared here for me in the exercise. I will paste it and sorry, not enter but run, okay? And it will say that it's connected to IDR again. And then I can, can click on solution. This will navigate me to the cell with the solution of the exercise. You can see that there is obviously a for loop through the DF filtered, which is the list of the images which I found. And I copy that and I can go and add a new cell again, just under this one. Well, let's, let's be more precise under, under the connection cell and paste the code there and just click run. And this cell is executed and it's basically retrieving the three images. That's why I have three values and it uh, prints out the threshold value. Okay, that's the print statement here. And also it, um, it saves the TIFF file, okay? So the, uh, so the three new TIFF files should be now under file open. Indeed, there are three TIFF files uh, here and I can click and download them one by one, um, like so, file, download, okay, save. Yeah, that's the same as the, uh, as the first one. A, da -da -da. And this one, file, download, save file. Uh, bang. That's another image, obviously. Yeah. So this is the second one from the from the list. So like that, I obtained the three segmented images. I hope that this is clear. Now, if we go back and we still have some uh, 10, 15 minutes, if we go back to the walkthrough, this would be for this workflow gene to phenotypes. And there are plenty of other uh, uh, notebooks in this repository. Uh, some of them um, might be a little bit outdated. We are working on that, but basically the gene to phenotypes we just made to be kind of the best of, and indeed uh, showing, highlighting the strength of the usage of the API for the analysis of images and retrieval of them in IDR. Now, other suggested workflows here are uh, using Fiji, okay? Uh, Peter, sorry to interrupt because yes, F Fiji would be probably a kind of a, would be a repeat a bit of what we have done, but there were question about uh, something we didn't cover yesterday about import of uh, larger data with uh, common line. Uh, um, okay. Not with command line, with metadata. So I think it's probably worth covering some of this element uh, either via the guide. I, I put link in the guide, but maybe just showing that because uh, I think the the Fiji notebook is is would be similar to what we did uh, yesterday in a sense. Yeah, absolutely. The Fiji notebook is basically not doing anything else in the IDR metadata retrieval or analysis sense. 
um, uh, than, than what I just shown. The only edge of the Fiji notebook is that's because it's Fiji. That's because people like Fiji. Uh, that's, that's, that's valid, of course, but you saw enough of Fiji yesterday. So let me just, uh, just navigate to the Omero guides. Um, yeah. yeah, while Peter is doing that, any, basically anything when you want to analyze or run any script in R, MATLAB or Elastic Cell Profiler, you can point them at IDR instead of uh, your own server. And we have, uh, as Peter pointed out, a good amount of example. The only thing you will have to do is download the generated output. Uh, you cannot write them back as we did. So the the thing we show with parade and filtering is not uh, is not possible after on the IDR server. Okay, I I am I'm just getting uh, t taking the starting point here. I could also go to the walkthrough from yesterday, but uh, the guides are much safer. Okay, so let's let's go to the to the base. Uh, this is the docs Omero guide under general concepts. I have the upload data. And in the upload data, there is import image data. Okay, so uh, that would be the import of images. Yeah, then uh, there is something about changing the rendering settings. But I think the question was targeted at the import of metadata using command line. Yeah. Okay, yes. let's let's go let's go here. And so I'm on a docs general concept upload data, and it's import metadata using the command line interface. I I will just make it. Uh, blatantly obvious by uh, by pasting into the chat what what am I studying which doc um, you can click on that if you if you kind of got lost um, and let's let's go through that uh, let's go through that so uh, we typically don't show that in the workshops uh, so uh, bear with me the uh, nevertheless the walkthrough is there and it it all works so uh, command line interface is a, something which you can also also think of as a client of omero we were going through uh, mainly omero web this is a client this is main an application running locally which connects to the omero server yeah then i was mentioning omero insight this is something uh, this is a Java-based desktop application, again, which connects to Omero server and is capable of uh, importing images. But then we have the command line interface for short CLI, okay, CLI, um, which is also a client of Omero. Uh, so again, kind of a, a locally based application. Well, uh, application is a strong word in the sense it's it's basically a a bunch of code which will uh, which will run locally on your machine and be able also to import images and uh, metadata and you can also import metadata using uh, scripts inside the uh, user interface based uh, clients like uh, Omero web I, I will touch upon it as well so um, I don't know if if you are completely scared by the command line, then tell me now, okay? Because I will not bother to go through those command line options. But if you are not, then uh, you can simply install the command line interface uh, as highlighted in the walkthrough. It's quite easy. And yeah, uh, you use... Uh, a preferably conda environment which will give you a environment controlled and uh, safe from uh, uh, safe from conflicts of dependencies in python and then uh, you can go and say pip install omero metadata okay that's what you definitely want to do and if you've done that you will end up in an environment such as uh, such as this so I have my conda here. Okay, I have the environment under N562. So I just go conda activate N562. Okay, and if I go pip freeze, which basically shows me everything what is installed there, then it's a little bit too much, but I will go pip freeze and grab metadata. They 
this is enough. You can see that I have installed Omero Metadata 060 on that command line environment, which I hope is the last uh, uh, latest, uh, latest version. Okay, and then using this command line environment, I can start doing things like uh, Omero login. Okay, I will log in to a server called workshop.openmycrosscopy.org. Okay, and uh, na na na, and da da da. And it's telling me already creating session for trainer one at workshop.openmicroscopy.org. This is the same thing you saw in, this is just like if I just passed the uh, login page of the Omero web and I'm now logged in to Omero. But this time I'm logged in using the, using the uh, command line interface and it gives me a lot of options i mean i can i can write scripts write and execute scripts here in this environment etc etc or use the pre um, uh, pre-written plugins such as the metadata import okay so if i if i go here to the um to the walkthrough here what does it say i mean Forgive me if it crashes, yeah, because uh, it will probably crash because of some typo or so. Uh, I'm just trying to simple annotation CSV, okay? So let's let's go, of course, simple. Uh, simple annotation CSV is in the walkthrough. You can just download it and it's a Microsoft Excel file. I will open it so that you can see. If you prepare yourself a CSV, which is very typical how the, the metadata start on your site, no? but that, that will be something which comes from somewhere. I mean, it can be spat out by your local Fiji or MATLAB or anything, anything, or your colleague might have given that to you in the CSV form. And you have a table with uh, not necessarily data set name and image name, but you will have some characteristics and you will have to identify the images in Omero. Uh, with the lines in the CSV. I mean, that's necessary. And uh, uh, yeah, I can, we can show you some tricks how to, how to get the list of images from Omero to, to, um, to set up your CSV. Once you have the CSV, which is for me easy because I downloaded the example, then you go further in the walkthrough and uh, say, uh, I want to, I want to run this command. That's that's the all important command, which uh, which we will study. I will first allow myself to put it into my text editor because there I have more power over it, kind of. Uh, so it says Omero metadata populate dash dash report so that there is a verbose report, batch, and wow. Okay, batch thousand file local pass two IDRs. Uh, yeah. So I have it here in the uh, end project ID. Wow. I think there will be a data set. Yeah. So I have it in downloads. Huh? No, I don't. I have it nowhere. So simple annotation CSV, save the file. Dunk. Okay, so where is my text? So this will be a tilde. This is the path to, okay, I'm just pointing the command uh, to, the, uh, to the CSV and I will uh, not work. You got a typo, Peter, downloads, you took a typo there. Okay, I will, I will sort it out on the line itself. Yeah. Okay, so that's, that's uh, thank you. I will paste it here. And as Jean-Marie said, first of all, this is data set, okay? And no project I want to work on, data set. And the ID I will have to, I will have to harvest from Omero. You know, maybe the autocomplete function of the command line. So downloads is now correct. And it's called simple, simple something, simple annotation CSV, yeah? Um, Let's take the number three because that's the one I just downloaded, I think. Ah, sorry. Okay, sorry. So, um, simple annotation CSV and the data set ID I will have to find after me connecting to the uh, server, which is called workshop. Okay, so uh, ta -da -da, workshop 
and um, uh, yeah, I want to work with this data set SIRNAI HeLa and the data set ID I just grabbed from here. Okay, and I paste it on the command line. So it's uh, some number that does matter. And then I will go and click enter. Let's first have a look. What do we have here now in the attachments? I have something here. So, um, Bachimich export zip is actually harmless and ROI intensities is harmless as well. I don't have any uh, key value pairs which would be kind of rich here. Okay, so that's fine. That's, that's the thing to remember. Um, very good. And so we remember we have two attachments here, yeah, in Omero on this. And when I execute this command over here, when I'm lucky, oh yeah, it goes through. Very good. So this is a happy command uh, which created a, a file into uh, and attached it to the data set in Omero, just as specified. And the data set has now a file which is an Omero tables file. That's how you create it from your local CSV and Omero tables inside, inside the uh, inside Omero. And I refresh that, and on the data set I have a new file called bulk annotations. Okay, and this is what what I just uploaded using the using this uh, local. Uh, Excel file, you can see the, the match here, okay, the image name and etc. And I can start, let's say, uh, yeah. Um, and then uh, I would I would be able also to make these, uh, these uh, strings numbers if I wish so. I can show you the trick how to do that. Uh, so let's not lose time with that. And then in the next step, I can do what's written in the walkthrough and take the, these uh, rows and columns and put them as key value pairs into, into here, okay? And for that, um, on each image, so every image will have its own row in the Omero tables and the column header will be a key and then a value will be uh, the, the value for that image, okay? So that's what's done uh, when I go back to the walkthrough. Right, when I go back to the walkthrough, where is it here? Yeah, so that's what we just done. We successfully created the table and then select an image inside. Uh, yeah, it's in under tables. So uh, yeah, I didn't show you that. So let's show you that. The, the values are already here under tables, okay? So this is already quite a win because you have it now all in Omero. Yeah, image by image, each one of them has the data for a CSV clickable like that. But to be more uh, human readable, you can do it uh, in the second step by uh, saying, download this simple annotation bulk map. Okay. And then uh, go with this command. All right. So I will have to create the command like so. Omero metadata populate is just the context is bulk map config local path to, and I will use completely something different. So I will just go here, batch hundred and local path to punk, and it will be again downloads and then a simple annotation bulk map config dot yaml batch and the data set I will take from here. Yeah, copy and I will go to the end and, and cut it out and paste the data set and hit enter and already it, the thing is cooking, okay? So he's reusing the session, Ta da da he successfully populated the metadata. Yeah, he created and linked 100 map annotations. That's that's quite a number, yeah? So he created map annotation is another term for key value pair, okay? So he created quite a few key value pairs out of those Omero tables. And if I click on an image, I can see that here in the key value pairs are very nicely formatted key value pairs saying gene. You can see that they were not there before, yeah? 
and this this is the ones I just created. So in this manner, you can uh, industriously import metadata. That's how IDR is actually importing its metadata. These two steps I just shown you. But let's not forget that you might have some users which are completely user interface bound. And for those, I have here under import scripts, a populate metadata script. And indeed, thank you for that question because you are not the first and not the last asking that. And this script and this workflow is becoming more and more popular and uh, we will improve the, the Omero guides as well, yeah, to, uh, to point better this workflow. And you can do that, that script will allow you to do the first step of what, what I was showing on the command line. Yeah, so in the first step, you can populate the metadata and end up with the Omero tables like so, yeah. On the second step on the key value pairs, we cannot serve you with the UI script yet, but uh, it might come in the future. Yeah, so any more questions? Uh, or did I satisfy your um, your quest? Yeah, I think that's Stefan said it's, it's great to go through that. That's a, a key part, I think, the, as Peter highlighted is people ask for putting more metadata. You might have to do a bit of prep at times of your CSV, especially for the bulk part, but uh, it's a good, a good way of populating, for, especially when you have high content screening, like in your case, Stefan. And as I was saying in the chat, we have started to, I put link to our YouTube channel. Uh, uh, Peter prepared some video recently in for another workshop in January and we are working on, our focus has been on the guide. We are now trying to update our video to make things more, uh, what we have put in the guide in some of the video, like the, popul the populate metadata that Peter has shown that would come into video as well. It's uh, quite a popular uh, task that people need to know. Okay, any more questions? We, we will have to start wrapping up so that we don't uh, end up abruptly and unpolitely.